Good morning, viewers. Once again, I'm the Reverend Dr. Medad Irunji Jayesu, the founder of World Child Ministries. I have been talking about beginning and finishing well. We started on Monday by talking about a man called Manoah who gave birth to Samson. We talked about how he was very successful for 20 years, following all the vows of being a Nazarite. But yesterday, we talked about when he went down to Gaza. When Samson went down, not up to Jerusalem, but down to Gaza, he had so many problems. We said he saw a woman there called Delilah who was a prostitute, and Samson fell in love with her, a woman who was completely wrong for him. This is another example of the pain and ruin that comes into Samson's life because he did not guard his heart. In chapter 16, verse 4 and 5, he never guarded his heart. My brothers and sisters, we need to guard our hearts. He loved money, she loved money, sorry, and was a prostitute. Every one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Delilah was also deeply in love, but she was in love with money, not with Samson. They gave her 1,100 1, shekels to make, which, to deceive Samson and get the secret from him. She nagged him over and over, please tell me where your great strength lies. Verse 6 to verse 9. The sources of Samson's strength was not obvious. This means that he probably was not at large, heavily muscled, but his strength lied in his hair. The Bible says that she bound him. And with what you may be bound to afflict you to give us the knowledge. The writer knew that Samson was strong, yet he also knew that he could be bound with something. When she made him drunk, she bound him and sin bounds us. Sin nags us. Sin of money is a very big problem that we struggle with. She made him drunk. He drank himself silly. He broke the Nazarite law of alcohol and drank himself silly. He went bananas because he could say anything. And she bound him and uh, she was sinfully romantic and massaged him. Now please tell me where your strength comes. And because he was drunk, the rider took new ropes and bound him. And he lied her three times because he was not supposed to lie. Then they, she, he would break the ropes. The rider never gave up on Samson. She kept nagging, telling me where your power comes from. How can you say that you love me when your heart is away from me? Samson betrayed his own source of power. In chapter 16, verse 19, Samson finally betrayed his source of power and told her that if you can shave my hair, I will be like other people. He told her his heart. He was so sad that Samson betrayed himself. And then the Philistines, uh, when he, she made him drunk, they came and cut off his hair. And uh, she ruled him into sleep on her knees, and he lost his anointing. Then she began to torment him. Samson, the Philistines are coming. And the Bible says he jumped up and found that the Holy Spirit had left him. Not that his hair made him strong, but that his hair was the symbol of his consecration and was the pledge of God's favor to him. While his hair was untouched, he was a consecrated man, but as soon as his hair was cut away, he was no longer consecrated and his strength departed from him. 
<laughs> so when his strength departed from him, the Bible says he lost his power. When he lost his anointing, he was betrayed by Delilah, his sweetheart. He was arrested by the Philistines. He was bound by the Philistines. The Philistines plucked out his eyes. The Philistines castrated him. He lost his sexuality. He was thrown into prison in Gaza. He was given two jobs of grinding millet, of wheat, and dancing for ceremonies and parties. He was mocked, humiliated, and the name of the Lord was ridiculed. So my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that when you run away from the Lord, you will lose your anointing. You can imagine a man of God who was very powerful, a whole uh, uh, religious leader of Israel, a whole military commander of Israel, a whole Nazarite. He lost it all. He became a slave. He lost his eyes. He lost his sexual parts. He lost his power. He was bound with bronze feet as his hands were bound. He was no longer free. And he was given a job. He started grinding millet and wheat. And he paid for his sin. But I want to end with something very good. That while the Philistines mocked him in verse 26, 25, uh, while the Philistines praised their God that Samson was dead, uh, his power was off. The Bible says he cried to the Lord in distress. And when he cried to the Lord in distress, the, he repented of his sins while he was in prison. And the Bible says his hair began to grow. God gave Samson hope in the midst of dungeon. His hair began to return. And we can suppose that his strength also began to return. I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister. Doesn't matter where you are. His hair began to grow. The first times didn't notice that his hair was growing and his strength was coming. And the Bible says that hope for Samson began to arise. So I want to encourage you that when you repent and return to the Lord, your hair will begin to grow. Your anointing will begin to grow. And your hope will begin to arise. So when Samson's hair began to grow, what did he, did it prophesy that his hair was beginning? The Bible says that uh, there was a very big party to celebrate the uh, down, downfall of Samson. And uh, the five kings who hated God, they all gathered to celebrate, to have a big party. And uh, they brought Samson. And the Bible says that Samson was helped by a little boy who helped him to say, this is the pole, this is the pole. When he held the poles that were holding, 3,000 men upstairs, those who are downstairs, and the temple of their God, uh, besides Solomon, Samson prayed his last prayer. This morning you can even pray the last prayer, and God answered it. That I may, with one blow, Take revenge on the Philistines. Samson's end was both bitter and sweet when he asked God for only and only last prayer. God gave him strength. He granted his prayers 20 times. Can you imagine? All the power that he had for 20 years, God put it in one day. He lifted the building a three-storied building and threw the building down and the Bible says that there were 3,000 men 
who died in that building. All the kings, five kings, all their generals, all their wives, all their children, they were all completely destroyed in one day. The Bible says that he killed people in his death more than he killed when he was alive. And Samson is now counted among the heroes of faith in chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews. He is now in heaven because of the second chance God gave him. So today, I want to challenge you, my brothers and sisters. This guy began very well. He finished so badly, but praise God, when he was in prison, he repented and God restored him. And I'd like you today to think about your life. How did you begin? And how are you going to end? Samson began very well. He was so arrogant, he fell in the middle and he was castrated. He lost his eyes. He lost his anointing. He was in jail. He was given a bad job of dancing and grinding millet. But at the end of his life, he was given a second chance. He killed thousands and he died in the hands of the Lord. So may God bless you as you think about finishing well. We wouldn't you to be to finish like Samson, who started very well and finished in death. But if you have fallen, ask God to forgive you so that your hair will begin to grow. So that the Lord will grant you back your anointing of fighting God's enemies. So that your name will be included in the heroes of faith, as it is written in chapter 11 of book of Hebrews that Samson was a hero of faith. So let's pray together as we prepare. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because there are so many men in this nation who began very well and they are now doing so badly. There are so many women who began very well. They are now doing so badly because of arrogance and pride corruption and all other things. They have committed terrible things. And I pray that you will help them to finish well. I pray that you will restore them as you restored Samson. I pray that you will give them strength once again to love you and take care of you. And I pray that the nations of the world will know once again that you are with them. I pray for those who have lost their faith, those who are involved in sexual immorality, alcohol, and all things. I pray that all those backsliders will come back to you and you will restore them and empower them again. I pray for our leaders, that our leaders will finish well. Those who began very well, that they will finish well in the name of Jesus. And I pray that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, your blessing which was released on Samson will be released upon you now and forevermore. Amen.